guru. That's the word. Yeah. <laughs> How the hell do you do it? How the hell do you do it? Good question, Mike. And you whammy the ball. Um, whammy? Yeah, whammy. That's a that's a real term in long drive. Uh, for example, Thackerville. This is the most we've ever said Thackerville, Oklahoma in the history of the Stick and Hack Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stick and Hack Show. A sophisticated and brilliant look into the world of golf from a stick and a hack. Now, your hosts, Mike Ryan and Adam Grubb. All right, everybody, welcome in. This is the Stick and Hack Show. I'm your host, Adam Grubb, the hack. That's Mike Ryan, the stick right there. First show of 2022, Mike. Welcome to you. Good to have you here. Good to see you. Happy New Year, buddy. Thank you. you. Thank you. Haven't we passed the point where Happy New Year is is, uh, socially acceptable? For me, it is. After the third, at that point, okay, I don't need the Happy New Year every time. You know what I mean? I know that's one of those things. People are going to be like, oh, you're a grump. I'm not. Well, it's the first time I've seen you, so... Okay. Happy New Year, I guess. Uh, Our guest today is Alex Phillips. She is in the top 10 of the world-ranked long drivers in the world. She is on the WLDA, and uh, this is a very exciting guest for us to kick off the year, Mike. Uh, First of all, she has uh, incredible golf experience. She's a teacher, a coach. She's a fitness, um, I don't know, I don't know, what what is the word? Fitness instructor, maybe? A freak? Fitness freak? (laughs) See, uh, if you looked, if you guru, that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alex. I don't know the, the proper terminology. Uh, her uh, her Instagram though is is phenomenal, just in, in her workout regimen, and it has to be because she is uh, continuing to be in the top ten of the long drive, long hitters of uh, the world, and a fascinating story. And we can't wait to talk to her, Mike. We're going to learn because you and I. Now, this might be a shock to to the listeners. But you and I, although you are 20 strokes better than me in actual golf, off the tee from a distance perspective, we're not that far off. Now, we might be far off. You're in the middle and I'm Everything 20 else. to 30 yards yes. to the also right. True. But as far as distance is concerned, you and I are pretty, pretty, uh, pretty stacked up evenly. So even you, sir, can learn something today about uh, giving a little bit more distance on the ball. But also just that, just that world, right? You you would probably be the first to, to admit that the long drive competitions over the last several years have become more and more prevalent and prominent, especially on TV because of the way that the, the golf world has moved to the long ball. Um, do you watch the, the uh, LDA and are you familiar with some of the, uh, some of the big hitters that are currently on the, on that tour? I have a little bit, but um, y- you know, I, They've become more popular, but I still think they're not quite where I think they're going to be from a popularity standpoint. I think they're still growing, um, and I think it's uh, it's going to be one of those – those will be one of those um, things in golf that I think are going to get even more popular over the next few years. So, well, I think it's I think it's helping grow the game. It's also getting more people and that, that ca- casual viewer watching something. If you're, if you're watching Cornhole on ESPN, for God's sakes, you can watch the long drive competition, right, if that's where you're at. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the first up. Uh, let's talk about the long ball, Mike. Although you would have to think that many side bets were made between golfers dating back to the origin of the sport, the PGA Championship Long Drive Competition started in 1949 in Hermitage Country Club in Virginia. When Chick Herbert, Chick Herbert, Herbert, doesn't matter, Chick, stepped up to the tee box on the designated hole, he was looking for one big swing to launch a towering drive while staying in the fairway. Herbert's 300-plus yard drive earned a spot in the history of long drive as the first winner of a PGA long drive event. He would go on to win his first and only major event five years later at the PGA Championship. So it sounds like this dude was a golfer as well, not just a long drive hitter. The long drive competition became a popular contest conducted on Tuesdays during championship weeks, but was not contested every year. In 1963, the Golden Bear, for those of you unfamiliar, Jack Nicholas, put his stamp on, and that was to Shane specifically, Mike, just to Shane. The Golden Bear put a stamp on the history of long drive, winning the PGA Championship long drive competition at Dallas Athletic Club. Jack ripped a 341-yard tee shot at the time, and he also won the PGA Championship that same year. At the 1974 PGA Championship long drive competition, Evan Big Cat Williams, apparently the first Big Cat, Evan Big Cat Williams set the record for the PGA event with a 366-yard tee shot at Tanglewood Golf Club in Clemens, North Carolina. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Beginning in 1976, South Korean golf equipment manufacturer Volvic became the major sponsor for an annual long drive event that would decide the world's longest golf drivers. Events were initially scheduled early in the week in conjunction with the PGA Championship, 
And in 1995, the Long Drivers of America, LDA, was established, and a master's division was added a year later to add to the history of long drive by allowing pro long drivers over the age of 45 to compete. In 2000, the LDA added a women's division to the World Championship schedule events, and a little over a dozen years later, NBC Sports Group founded the Golf Channel, and the new concept network began airing LDA championship events. Two years later, the franchise was purchased by Comcast and became the World Long Drive Association, and the World Championship event in 2015 was relocated from Nevada to Windstar World Casino and Resort in Thackerville, Oklahoma. Why do we say all of this, Mike? Because somewhere along the way, the sport became filled with elite athletes and to become PDLA world champion went from 350-yard winning drives to competitors needing consistent drives above 450 yards. Today's guest is one of those, Alex Phillips. She grew up around mm-hmm. athletics in Reno, Nevada, learned to play golf at a young age, helped to earn a scholarship to play at the Division I level in college. She played four years on the team at uh, Cal Poly, having some success as a player and later as a coach, but it wasn't until after graduation that she got her start in long drive. Alex finished top four in her first World Long Drive Championship appearance in 2015 and has held on to a top 10 ranking ever since. Members and listeners, we are incredibly excited to welcome in to the Stick and Hack Show, Alex Phillips. Alex, how are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me on. Well, we appreciate it very much. Uh, did anything I, I read there a bit ago surprise you? Did you know everything I just said? I didn't know like the full history, but it was pretty cool that 2015 was my first year, and that was the first time it was really big and televised, and it was in Thackerville, Oklahoma, which is a place. It's, <laughs> it's, well, at least I got that right. At least that fact is right. That that Maine put in that it, it is in fact a, a real real town. So you're you're a, we got so much to talk about here, obviously. Um, but I just want to understand you're a long you're a long drive star. So does that mean simply that at some point you realized you were much like myself and had no short game, and so you just said I'm just going to be a long ball hitter? How did that work, and why did you just decide to switch gears? Yeah. So after I graduated from college, I'd had a knee surgery and it took me a little longer to recover than I had originally planned or expected. And I wasn't super stoked on my golf game at the time. So I wasn't really playing. I was coaching. And because I was coaching, I went to the PGA show. And I'm sure you guys have gone to the show. The demo day at Orange County National is an awesome experience. You know, the 360 degree driving range. And I'm long. I've always been long. I mean, I now have the resume and top 10 in the world, but even back in college and stuff, I, I hit the ball long and there was this girl behind me, like out hitting me. And I'm like, dang, who's that? Well, I turn around and on her bag is the 2013 world champion. So I was like, oh, I can kind of keep up with her. And so we started talking and she actually became a really good friend. And she talked me into competing later that year. And that was kind of how I got into it was because Heather, the master was like, you could do this. And I was like, okay. Alex, what, what's what's your magic formula for blasting the ball? I mean, is it is it club speed? Is it is it lower body training? I mean, how yes. the hell do you do it? <laughs> yes, how the hell all do of you that. Do it? I, good question. I am Mike. very lucky Thank that you. I have a very good golf swing. I'm very efficient. I am the smallest competitor in the top ten. Um, so pound for pound, I have to be really long. So I have to have an efficient golf swing, right? You always look at the track man. You start looking at the smash factor and everything, right? I have to be efficient because I'm never going to be the fastest or the strongest or the biggest. So I have to be efficient. And so that's one thing is um, getting equipment that's fit for you is huge. Um, In long drive, you can go up to 48 inches, which that's kind of been a big talk in the USGA lately and everything, especially with Bryson going to a big shaft. Um, And so for me, I only go to a 47 because I am short. And so if I go over 47, if I go to the 48, it starts becoming inefficient for me. So yes, I have the longer shaft. Yes, I have, um, with the longer shaft, you have the longer arc, you have more time to gain club head speed. But if you're not hitting the ball centered and you're not being efficient with your golf swing, I don't have a chance. So that's my biggest thing. We see that a lot that, uh, even in pro golfers that hit the ball a long way, they don't, they don't all look like Bryce and they don't all look like tiger. They, they all, they, some of them are very, very small, compact individuals, both female and male. Um, so you have to figure out what works for you and works for your swing, what equipment is working as well. I know it looks like you just kind of get up there, you rock back and forth and you whammy the ball. Um, but whammy. is there, yeah, whammy, is that? whammy the are ball. You champ- are you champ kind now? <laughs> what is this? That's, um, a, that's a real term in long drive. It is a real term. It, 100% it is. It's, uh, I know there's more to it, So, but it's not just your golf swing either. So 
can you divulge the secrets of of what these people and your competitors are doing out there on that on that range because it looks phenomenal I mean, the biggest thing that a lot of the long drivers work on is their weight transfer. That's the big thing that you said, like rocking back and forth. You see Kyle Berkshire do it as in, in his pre-shot, right? Because you're training your body to use the ground and to use the weight transfer. The other big thing that I have to do is in the back of my swing, I have my hands really high. Again, I'm perfectly average, but I'm very short for long drive terms. Um, and so in kind of getting those hands high, separating the hands and the body, it almost cheats physics a little bit because, you know, the higher your hands, the longer the arc, the longer the arc, the more time you have to gain club head speed, right? You see guys like Landon Gentry with the club all the way back, like John Daly, right? That's just giving you more time to gain more speed. And so in being five, five and a half, if I stand up really tall, I, I just don't have that much time to gain that kind of speed. So what I teach and what I do is get those hands really high in the backswing. And you'll see that in my swing. And then that's a big thing, especially that I see amateurs do. They just turn and they have those hands real close to their body. They have the arms shortened, right? If you get those hands extended, you can kind of just grow that circle, grow that radius and so that you have more time to gain club head speed. And that's going to be the best and easiest way to kind of grow that club head speed. And with more club head speed, obviously more ball speed. Obviously. And speaking of obviously, yeah, Alex. I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I knew that's what he was... I don't know that's where this was going. Yeah. That's what wham- so, that, that that equals whammy. That so equals whammy knows. exactly. <laughs> it's an equation, um, Alex. You know, uh, take us through your stats. Speaking of ball speed, and and before you you go here, just speak very slowly for Adam so he can <laughs> fully understand what what we're what we're talking about. Even that might not help, but yeah, let's 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 hear it. What are these What are these stats? So my club head speed in competition is around 117 miles an hour. That's pretty much club head speed average for the PGA Tour Pro, right? They're getting close to 120. The guys that are swinging really fast are the ones, um, you know, like Bryson and everyone. Kyle starting to top 150 with his club head speed. I'm very happy when my ball speed is that fast. Um, competitive on the lady side is over 160 mile per hour ball speed is going to be where you start seeing really the top 10 competitors. Um, everyone's like, how far do you hit it, right? And that's always a big question, but that's not... The, the comparative because I have lost an event at 370 and I won an event at 280, you know, with the conditions, with the altitude, we were into the wind, downwind, like you can't really compare a lot of those numbers. The big number that's comparative is your ball speed. And so on the lady side, especially if you're getting up over 160, you're going to be really competitive. Um, where on, on the guy side, I believe Kyle just posted over 230 for the first time ever. Um, I mean, if you're getting up over 217, 220, people are going to start talking. And then, yeah, that 230 number was huge for Kyle. He's our reigning world champion right now, and he's yeah. he's long. <laughs> he is, and and he's a personality. Uh, and I think that's what is what is unique about this sport and and this specific in, in the long drive is that these aren't just guys that couldn't make it on tour and are out there blasting balls. These are athletes that are training in some cases harder and more efficiently than, than other professional athletes in their same sport because of the, the wear and tear on the body. Number one, uh, number two, the ability to understand the physics of the swing and the stats behind it are, are incredible. But I guess the question is this over the last years, Kyle is one of those personalities, but has become more and more popular because of people in the PGA. And you've said his name several times here, and we can't have a broadcast, whether it's Stick and Hack Reacts or the Stick and Hack Show, where we don't mention his name because he's such a prominent force and personality in, in, in golf right now. Bryson DeChambeau coming in and saying, hey, here's the math equation of how I, how I play golf and how I get the most out of my swing and most out of my shot is knowing these stats that you just rattled off and knowing where he needs to be are are those the types of personalities that you mix with every day are the the Brysons of the world or would he be considered even an outlier in your circles no Bryson's been great you know he's bringing a lot of eyes to long drive he is definitely a personality um but you know he sets his goals and he tries to reach them there's a lot of the guys in long drive as well a lot of them came from baseball so they have to learn golf you know a lot of guys played in the major league baseballs um farm leagues and everything and so they have to learn all of this stuff. 
Bryson's very lucky that he came from golf. And so he is able to work the ball. He's able to do all those things. And he understands golf. So when he starts seeing the numbers and what they produce, he's able to figure out what he needs to do to get there. Right? If you tell someone that doesn't know anything about golf that they need a, a higher attack angle, but they don't know what that is, you have to then explain it. Right? Bryson's really easy. He has that golf history and that golf knowledge. Um, he's definitely a, a character, but he's been really great. Um, I haven't seen him. I haven't competed in the PLDA that he's been in. Um, it's been a very interesting time in long drive since the golf channel kind of went away from it. And um, that's one reason you're not seeing it on TV as much. And um, they're not really broadcasting the WLDA anymore. And so it's kind of separated into the PLDA and it's a little different competing right now. Um, Explain but, that. Explain the the because it sounds like a a cart indie car kind of shift and and there's a lot of <laughs> politics and and broadcast rights and money involved and can you get into that without putting yourself into a bit of a spot? Yes and no. Um, one, so the Golf Channel bought the World Long Drive Association, so they have the rights. That'd basically be like the Golf Channel bought the PGA Tour, and then stopped hosting events. So. Now they have the rights to the WLDA, all the, everything, right? All the big sponsors and everything know the WLDA and they're not hosting events. So the PLDA came up and it would basically be like the Corn Ferry Tour or even more like the Dakotas Tour is like the thing to play now, right? So is Tiger Woods, is Phil Mickelson, is Bryson DeChambeau going to compete on the Dakotas Tour just because it's the only tour available? I don't know. You know, they're used to playing for $2 million purses. They're not used to paying, playing for $5,000 winner's checks. And that's kind of what happened to the WLDA, right? Especially on the women's side. So the WLDA, they, they had sponsors. We actually had a purse that was worth competing and traveling for. We went to Thackerville, Oklahoma, you know, like <laughs> places like that. And so now, now we have to go to places like that. And the, the purse isn't there because the, the eyes aren't there. The visual, the, sponsorships aren't there because the golf channel still has the rights to the WLDA. So now the PLDA is trying to grow. And so now there's no person. If there's no person, no one wants to compete. And if there's no one competing, there's no person. It's this really, really bad catch 22 right now that especially it's, there's still a lot of competitors on the men's side, but that's one thing. I mean, Bryson did great. He did, you know, he got top eight. He did really well, but he, 20 of the top 50 guys weren't there. You know, I mean, that's just what it is. There's a lot of guys, Joe Miller's from overseas with COVID and everything. A lot of those guys couldn't get here. Secondly, are a lot of those guys going to try to compete when the purse isn't what it used to be? You know, it, it, it it's kind of an interesting situation for long drive right now. And, and Mike and I've talked about this and we had Brittany Lindsay come on the program, uh, last year towards the end, we've had, we've had a lot of guests that, uh, Morgan Pressel was on talking about the, just the game for women in the, in the LPGA and, and its rise. But we don't think about the other, like, like the, the long drive competitions, long drive associations and these things that are affecting women. Um, but it sounds like this is affecting everybody as well in, in the sport and which is shocking to me. Because this is really the first time that I've that I've heard that there's a, there's a problem. Because to me, this is the most popular long drive has been in my in my lifetime, right? Um, because I'm I'm seeing it and I'm hearing names and the, and and Kyle Berkshires of the world. I know their name um, because I'm watching their Instagram and I'm watching their uh, their their social media and I'm, and but their coverage of this and the purses are not there is is new information uh, and it's frustrating. I'm sure. I mean, this is your career. And, and you're young enough to where this can be, this is something you want to compete in for a long, long time. What, where's the, where do we go from here? What, what is the, is there an answer? And outside of stick and hack sponsoring the damn thing, uh, which I can assure you, if you think the person <laughs> is low now, I can assure you, it will, it, uh, uh, this hat might be up for grabs for the winner at that point. But what do we do? How do we, how do we get more people involved in this and, and get you guys out there competing week after week and, and bringing the fans in? Cause it is remarkable to watch. I mean, one of the big things is getting more competitors, um, especially on the lady side. There's not a lot of information out there. You know, I have women reach out to me on social all the time. Like, Hey, I want to compete. I'm like, awesome. Like, where are you at? What are your stats? And my ball speed's about a hundred. Okay. Like go to the gym and call me back in six months, you know, like, but they don't know what's competitive, you know, um, the guys, you know, the guys have, um, buy-ins and they have, um, smaller events to kind of learn and grow and to see if they're competitive and see where they need to go. And they see Kyle's numbers and they see all that stuff. And we just don't really have that on the women's side. So we, but then I have other people 
you know, Kanani just got into the sport. She's new and she won her first time because she's long, but she didn't know that she was competitive. You know, she was from kind of smaller area. Didn't like, she's like, I think I hit the ball far, but I don't know. And so I think getting that kind of information out is going to be really big. Um, because once you have that, once you have those goals to see, like if you're have ball speed around 150, like you're pretty close. You could come compete. You know, you could hit a couple numbers. Um, but it, we need to get those more competitors, basically. Um, the good thing is the PLDA is doing a lot of events in slightly more accessible places this year. Um, you know, Mesquite, Nevada is a great place. One, because I'm a Nevada girl. But it's, you know, everyone can get to Vegas. It's $29 flights. It's super easy. You can get here and get to Mesquite really easy. Um, whereas, uh, for example, Thackerville you this is the most we've ever said thackerville oklahoma in the history of the <laughs> Act show. and maybe I mean, just oklahoma in general oh my god uh, are you are you their their spokesperson relax thackerville know, right? we'll, 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 that'll be the next, <laughs> next challenge we'll do it in thackerville oklahoma um yeah, alex phillips is the guest here on the stick and act show to one of the top 10 world ranked long drivers uh in the world and she is now adding to her resume uh guest on the stick and hack show and, and Alex, you talked about, you were just talking about getting in the gym and, and fitness in golf has become more and more popular over the last 20 years. Kind of walk us through your training regimen and, and key things that you do to improve your speed and distance every day. I should write something of these notes down. Yeah. You ready? You got a pen? Golf fitness. Okay. Yoga. That up he's not writing. Do any, he's not writing yoga. Any down. That's literally it. <laughs> so I went through phases. I've gone through phases. I did power lifting. I put up 300 pound squat. I've pulled weight deads. I did, I did that. I got very strong when I did that. I didn't have the mobility. Um, my swing got shorter. Um, and again, like I talked about, I'm too small to have a shortened swing. I have to do as much as I can. So yoga has been phenomenal. It actually started with COVID, um, here in Vegas, everything shut down for a month. Um, like shut down, shut down and no golf, no gyms, nothing. Right. And so I was like, Everyone's told me to do yoga my whole life. And they're like, you should do it. It's good for you. And I was like, that sounds ridiculous. I'm going to go lift weights. And so I'm like, I'm going to prove yoga doesn't work. So that's all I did for a month. I did yoga. That's it. I gained 10 yards. And I got really mad about it because like <laughs> just doing yoga. And so that has been just huge, huge in my, in my workouts. And I add it to all of my training clients. I make them do some type of yoga interactions. No, it's not the whole like, oh, we're in our heart space and everything. That's not my kind of yoga. My kind of yoga is the the body positions you have to get to, the mental uh, the mental and physical combination that it takes to do those yoga poses. Um, yes, I still lift weights. Yes, I still do all of the other things. Um, I've gotten to work with some awesome trainers um, that have taught me a lot. And But if you're going to do one thing, Adam, Adam, I'm yeah, look at me. Yeah. Do the yoga. <laughs> okay. I'll uh, sign up for that. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to do that. Right away. Right I'm going to charge tickets to go watch Adam do yoga. That's <laughs> what I want. Uh, you know, charity's big for you, Alex. And uh, you've got some events where you go out and, and uh, people try to, uh, to outdrive you. Uh, what is the situation with uh, with your charity work? And, and also, what is the percentage of times that you've been out, uh, drove, out driven by some guy <laughs> named Trent that was there for a corporate <laughs> retreat? It's usually Brayden. No. Yeah, it would be. It would be. <laughs> that idiot. Um, no, so yeah, it's super fun. I get to travel and work with different charities and corporations and get to raise money for charities. And so what we do is uh, people pay to try and out drive me on a tee, mostly because I don't look like what you expect an long driver to look like. You know, we talked about Bryson, how we put on that weight and everything. That's what people are expecting. I am five foot five and a half. If I stand up on my toes, I, <laughs> I am, um, I wear the short skirt and everything. And people are like, who are you? And I'm like, I'm the long driver. They're like, no, you're not. Like, yeah, I promise. <laughs> um, so I, I don't really look like that. So it's a lot of fun to outdrive a lot of the guys out there. And it's more fun when I come in afterwards and we're doing the dinner and you know, there's a couple guys like, Oh, I outdrove the long drive. And people are like, Oh yeah, who's that? 
and they point to me and I was like, it's a lose lose for you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I, Alex, we've got the uh, sticking out challenge. It's coming up in May, uh, in, uh, in French look, Indiana. And then hopefully we're trying to work it out for you to be there. Cause I think that would be awesome. Um, be, cause I can see all that and knowing our members, Mike, <laughs> knowing those that are part of the stick and hack ecosystem, uh, I can see that that scene that she just described play out time and time again. Uh, Alex Phillips is the guest here on the Stick and Hack show, uh, first show of the uh, of the new year, and uh, one of the top ten long drive in the uh, in the world, which is awesome. Uh, all right, so Alex, we've got uh, a, a break here, and then we're going to play a game. If, you, if you've got time to stick around, we're going to play in or out, um, and we'll do that in just a second. Are you game for that? I'm in. All right, Alex Phillips, <laughs> yes, Stick and Hack show. I'll be right back after this, and we'll play in or out. Join Stick and Hack next May for the 2022 Stick and Hack Challenge, a weekend of world-class golf, challenges, food, and major prizes. On May 14th and 15th, join us at French Lake Resort Casino for a weekend you'll be talking about all year. Enjoy golf at both the Pete Dye and Donald Ross courses. Meet new friends and participate in unique challenges designed for the stick or the hack. Bring your spouse, hit the bar, spa, or casino, and we'll see you in May of 2022. All right, we're back here at the Stick and Hack Show. Welcome in to you. Uh, we have Alex Phillips, is one of the top 10 in the uh, WLDA in the long drive competition. She is a uh, five foot six, but mighty in her uh, ability to whammy the ball, Mike. Uh, she is. <laughs> Hey, it will become. Buy you a hat. It's like fetch. It's never going to happen. Yeah. It will become. I'm buying Adam a cowboy hat now. So you can wear that on the show. Um, all right, it's time for the game. Uh, let's play in or out. Uh, the topic here is workout people. <laughs> okay what are they called mike gurus Gu- fitness gurus fitness, fitness gurus, gurus. Yeah. workout That's people one I went with. okay whatever uh so in or out of our foursome so it's you me and mike and then this fourth person and you have to say if they're in or out do we want them to play with us or not very simple we're going to start with you we'll go to mike and then myself okay uh in or out workout people number one arnold schwarzenegger in or out in yeah in. but only if he's Absolutely. on mike's team <laughs> caveats there. is that because we think he's terrible at golf i bet yes. he's awful I bet he's awful. <laughs> and i bet i bet he'll smoke cigars the entire time um right right that's fine uh, suzanne summers in or out out i want to be the strongest girl in the foursome See, oh very <laughs> smart look at you there mike? i'm mike i think i'm uh yeah i think i'm out on suzanne summers. yeah i'm out on suzanne summers she's yeah. she's, I, I, she's a lot uh jane fonda in or out workout people, Jane Fonda. In. We would have such bad music going the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm in on Jane Fonda. <laughs> I'm in I'm in as well. I want Jane Fonda from Newsroom, though. I don't know if you guys have seen that <laughs> show. So I, I want like characters from Jane Fonda's uh, life. I don't want workout Jane Fonda. Uh, all right. This is an easy one, or should be at least, if you're an American. Uh, Chuck Norris. In or out? In. In. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah. Next. Uh, Mark Wahlberg, in or out, workout people. In, he's actually a really good golfer. He is yeah, a very I'm good in. golfer. Mike, he you has like in? a, he has a, yeah, he has like a par three course in his backyard. Yeah, but I gotta say out because as as his name came out of my mouth, I realized that he's been on this list before for something for another category, and I said that he had to be out because he'd want to do it at like three a.m. Remember? <laughs> So I got to stay consistent. He does have an odd workout regimen. It's right. Uh, I got to stay consistent. He's out right. um, for me. Uh, Fabio, in or out, workout people. Now, this is, this is contested, pre-show contested by Mike. Fabio, in or out? In. I think it's the hair. Way out for me. <laughs> I don't even know if he – is he a workout person? So is he a I, fitness I did person? some research, okay, some half-ass internet research. And, he, was, uh, he was on the cover of like these. Yeah, he was the terrible. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everyone knows who Fabio is. We don't need that. The question <laughs> was he in workout, and he did. In his height of his fame in the in the mid nineties, early nineties, he had this uh, exercise tape like everybody else did at the time. Okay. And so, yeah, Fabio, uh, Susan Power. He probably wore, he probably wore leotard. This too, is the most I've ever wanted to talk about Fabio. So I am going to move on. If, if, <laughs> yeah, if I agree, let's you. move on. I'm done. Uh, in or out workout people, Susan Powder. In just because I said said out to the other other lady. We got to have another girl on here. You got Jane Fonda. So that's my only. Oh, we do have Jane Fonda. Then out. We already got a girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mike. Yeah, so Susan Powder is 
she had the real short like white hair yeah she looks like she should be uh the lead singer of like yeah, a 90s alt rock band yeah i can no <laughs> way i know she's yeah. way too much she no she looks like she could beat my ass and just by looking at yeah. me so i'm she's out yes she's out uh yeah. billy blanks in in mike uh um, i just have no reason to say out yeah i'll go with billy blanks uh, he's got a good at he, he did he yeah. pass away seen, no is he alive <laughs> I don't know. Shane, can you I find out Billy Blanks is alive? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in for Billy Blanks. I think he'd be cool. I think he'd be a lot of fun. Um, all right, Bob Harper. In or out, workout people with Alex Phillips, Mike Ryan, Adam Grubb. And let's take an act show. Bob Harper. Out. That's Bob think... Harper? I was not. Who's Bob Harper? Yeah. He's, uh-huh. He was a, a greatest loser, biggest loser. He had a heart attack. Oh, working out. yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy. That guy. Yeah, sure. Sure, in. He's in. Why not? Okay. Alex, you said he's out with uh, no hesitation. By the way, uh, uh, a little this, hesitation. This just in. I just I, feel like we'd say. Uh, hmm. this just in. Uh, Billy Blanks is alive. According yeah. to Jane, his career is not. <laughs> 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 um, so Bob Harper is out for you, Mike, because you don't you don't like him. No, I said I'm in. Oh, you're he's in. in. Oh, Alex, I said no, out. I'm fine. I'm fine. I, just, I think yeah, we would whatever. just get yelled at for our nutrition the whole time. I agree That's with you 100. I want a Bloody Mary. He would just call me fat. He would just call me fat like Gary Player did that one time. Hey, he was talking. He did that to me too. Gary Player. When too. I was playing golf with him. Yeah. Yes. He says he he says Americans are all fat, which yeah. we probably are. But that's Gary's whatever. thing. He looks at you and he says you're fat, and then he then he stripes a ball two forty yeah. down the middle. Yeah, um, I was like fourteen. I was like, this is mentally detrimental. <laughs> oh my god, that's a whole different side of that story. Ours was like <laughs> six months ago. Man. Oh, oh, no. we're in our oh, I, play, I played with him at Pebble Beach and it was like yeah. the second hole. You're fat. Thank you. Oh, my God. Good morning. <laughs> you had 16 more holes of that. Oh, wow. God. 34, uh, actually. We got to play two days in a row. Look at you. Uh, in or out workout people. Last one here on the list. Richard Simmons. Absolutely. Only if he wears the shorts. Yeah. Damn right. <laughs> I'm I'm, Mike, I'm in on, on Richard Simmons. I'm in sure. on Richard. I've loved Richard yeah. Simmons for 20 years. I, I, yeah. When he was on Letterman, there was nothing yeah. better than Letterman and oh, Simmons together. Yes. Nothing better. Absolutely. And yeah. Richard Simmons, I think he would bring more joy to golf than I could possibly imagine. I bet he'd be <laughs> awful. And yes, if he, as long as he yeah, wore the see, shorts, which yeah. ironically are the same shorts that Shane wears when he plays golf with us, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Richard Simmons alive? Ooh, I, did uh, he die? No, he did die. Actually, I have no idea. Is he alive, Shane? You said that with pretty yeah. good conviction, though. Yeah, he's I alive. I, I thought he, he alive? Uh, Re- Regis Philbin died. That's what I was thinking of. Same oh. person. Yeah, same um, guy. <laughs> that's it, everybody. Minus what, the shorts. What a train wreck the last 10 minutes have been <laughs> of the second act show. But boy, by God, I hope you stuck in for it because it was fun. Alex Phillips, the guest here as we kick off uh 2022 of the show. Mike, uh, my thanks to you for being a part of this. As always, the uh, second act show quite possibly the greatest golf show in the world from the greatest golf club in the world without the course. Follow Alex Phillips on Instagram. Now, I, I, this is fun to say. Uh, a Philophil is uh, her Instagram as it reads at a Phil, a Phil, right? A Philophil. Mm-hmm. All right. A Philophil. Uh, go to Instagram or go to swing like golf, swing like a girl golf.com. Um, for more information on Alex Phillips as well. My, uh, my thanks to all of you for listening. Enjoy the week. And Alex, best of luck uh, this year on the tour. We hope to see you uh, in and out of the Sick and Hack Network uh, from time to time as a contributor as well as at our challenge in May. Uh, hopefully you can make it, all right? I hope so. We're going to try. All right. Thanks, Alex. There she goes. All right, everybody. Have fun. Talk to you later. All right. Peace out, guys. Okay. We're done. This has been the Stick and Hack Show. Go to stickandhack.com to become a free member of the world's greatest golf club without the course.